I just got myself my first dual sport, a DR650 to be exact. It's the old faithful do everything bike, and now I want to learn how to ride it off road. But I live in the prairies, and it's flat. Like, really flat. Living in the prairies doesn't really scream awesome dual sport riding. There is some fun stuff to ride, and there's really nothing in the way of anywhere you want to go. But maybe it isn't the greatest place if you're trying to challenge yourself and grow as a rider. That's why when my friend Mike asked if I wanted to go to the Rocky Mountains and ride in some event called the Wander, needless to say, I was pretty interested. And when Mike, the guy who rides on ice roads to the Northwest Territories in January, invites you to an event, it's safe to assume it's not your everyday Tim Hortons meet and greet. Mike played it out like this. Think geocache scavenger hunt, but on motorcycles. And the area you are looking in is 8,000 square kilometers of mountains, rivers, and grown-in trails. And the thing you're looking for is basically the size of a coin nailed or glued to something. Wow, count me in. So I put some new knobby tires on the old DR650 and joined in. This was going to be my first real taste of trail riding. Maybe some single track, and because it was in the mountains, I could only assume there would be some hills. Big hills. I'm coming at this from the perspective of a completely novice off-road rider. Maybe that's good though. I haven't been tainted by anything as unappealing as experience or skill, or even practice for that matter. Just good old fresh ripe ignorance flowing through my veins. The guys I'd be riding with were all down from northern Alberta. They all had one thing in common. They love riding off-road. They have a ton of seat time compared to me and some pretty serious dual sports. This would also be my first time meeting Trent. Trent is the organizer for the whole Wanduro event and mostly to be held responsible for the somewhat mental endeavor he has taken upon himself. Minimalist off-road adventure motorcycling, that's my, that's my jam. Trent is massively enthusiastic, high energy, he doesn't seem to stop smiling. He rides a 2013 Honda 450 and he's building a Sprinter camper van and being around him just kind of gets you pumped on riding. He described to me in detail the event and what led to its creation. So one of the reasons I got into this is because quite often people will buy these dirt bikes or these wonderful adventure bikes and never use them because they're either intimidated by the bike or they don't have friends to go with or they don't know where to go. You see these ads all the time in Kijiji with these dirt bikes for sale that haven't hardly been used. Saddest thing in the world. So this, this is partly just to get those people out so they can, they can enjoy some of these spectacular places that you can, these beautiful machines can actually get you to. And they're places that nobody else really goes to. Some of these trails are just a few dirt bikers that ever see these in a year. So I wanted to bring people out here and introduce these beautiful trails to them. We're seeing it, like I said, everything from V-Stroms to people how, who somehow road-plated their KTM 250 two-stroke. At the present time, it does need to be road plated because we need to be able to connect the different uh, trailheads that are on the highway. We wanted to eliminate all the paper, right? Because a lot of times these events have like roll charts and, or books and people are shuffling through all this stuff all the time and it costs a ton of money to produce these things. And so we decided to create an app instead. And it's, uh, I mean, if you think about the old school geocaching where all you had was an arrow in a distance before you had all of the mapping capabilities in the compass. It's kind of how the app works. So when you get close to a, what we call a quest point, the app will pop up and let you know that you're within shooting distance of this. It could be anywhere from eight kilometers to a few hundred meters, whatever we decide. And it'll say, hey, you're getting close, do you want to play this? And if you say yes, it gives you just a distance and a direction. That's all you know. And so you could be going up a road and suddenly you know, it's pointing kind of ahead and all of a sudden it starts pointing right and right and right. It's pointing that way. And you look and well, there's a river and it's pointing the other side of the valley thinking, well, how could that be? Yeah. 118 meters is on the other side of the river. Yeah. So you look at your map and you say, oh, well, there's a bridge just a few kilometers up and it looks like there's an old track down the other side. So maybe that's how we do it. So we'll go down to the main road, maybe get on the other side of the river, then find a trail. That's, that's, that's what we got to do, yeah. All right, let's give her. So off you go. Your arrow disappears because now you're out of the circle. Cross the bridge, come back, the arrow appears again. And now you're heading down the right track towards that uh, particular point. And 
And once you get there, within like what we call the inner trigger, it'll pop up and say, now it might be 20, 30 meters or whatever, it'll pop up with a question that you need to answer that you can only answer at that point. And it could be a geographical question or something, but quite often what we do is we put out a little aluminum tag with a number or a letter on it, and you need to find that little tag and, and answer in the app what's on that tag. The app gives you the, the score, and off you go to your next one. So the scoring system works in a, in a few ways. So we have several levels of difficulty for these quest points, ranging from zero to five. Zero is easy pavement. Five is like really tough single track or some maybe a rough river crossing is involved or something like that. And so the, the higher difficulty points are worth more, but also the ones that are further away from home base. So if you have to travel 30 kilometers up the highway to get to the logging road that takes you into there, that group of points will be, have a higher value put on them sort of at a base level because it takes a little longer to get there. And then we also add extra points on if the, if the points are like particularly scenic or there's a particularly historic aspect to it. Um, so we'll add extra points to those because we want to encourage people to go to those beautiful places. It's geared for everyone sort of from novice off-road gravel road, logging road kind of riders to really gnarly, highly skilled single track riders. You know, we've had a, we had a couple that came out on V-Stroms and, uh, you know, relatively novice and they spent the whole weekend doing just ones and twos and were completely occupied the whole time. So with this one to five rating in mind and a lot of these fives being pretty difficult to get to, maybe up in the Alpine, on sketchy, skinny single tracks covered in loose rocks on the side of mountains. I told myself, let's try to get a three this weekend and not fall off a cliff or break my bike or myself. That would be an achievement. But remember the people I'm with. They didn't drive 10 hours or so to do threes. They wanted to conquer this thing. So the first half of the first day was spent really getting a feel for where we were and how this whole thing works. And the reason I don't give, give specifics is because I think one of the one of the things that, one of the things that makes this so satisfying is if you've spent the time on the maps and you've kind of plotted it out. Maybe someone's given you like a general idea of where you should look. So they get out there and they've done a little sleuthing themselves. They figured it out. And they think, oh, maybe this is it. And they go up and they try it. And all of a sudden, this it's like you you go through a portal off off the main logging road and it looks all willowed in. And all of a sudden, you realize you're on this old mining track and it leads you whole, to a whole new world up in the Alpine. And you, you get up there and you go, wow, I did this, I did this, right? And it's, uh, it's a good feeling. It's a really good feeling. There's often a ton of work that needs to be done to rehabilitate trails. Over the winter, trees come down, trails get washed out, slides cover trails. I mean, th this is one of these areas where the trails need to be ridden to remain open. You know, you can, you can see every year the willows come a little closer, the rock falls come, the washouts go through. And, uh, you know, if no one cares about it, no one rides it, then eventually they're inaccessible. The weekend wasn't without its hiccups. Slippery everywhere. Oh, the woodman, super dangerous. Easy, huh? You just spin or? Yeah, right. He gave her a little bit of gas coming onto it and the bike just slid out Ooh. from under him. That sucks. We had one rider go down on a really slippery wooden bridge after some rain. You hold on. And unfortunately that led to a dislocation that we couldn't set on the hey, side of the road. No, I'm never ready. But... <sighs> she didn't go. So after about a half a roll of tape, we taped them up, and Ryan and I made the bumpy road back into town where he could see a doctor. The doctor was able to set it back in, and he'll be riding within a week.
There was a few drops, bikes here and there, some bumps and bruises. But overall, it was okay. a massively successful weekend. I managed to conquer one of the easier fives. That left me with a pretty awesome feeling for the whole weekend. Riding with all these people that have so much more experience than me was awesome. It really made me so much more confident in my riding and what I can conquer. <laughs> if you ever have a chance to ride at an event like this, I highly recommend it. Find the people that are better than you and just follow them. Watch what they do, see the lines they take, but also, don't be afraid to admit when it's too much for you to handle and hold back. And, it, and it's great because, you know, all these people mix together. So, I mean, we all have this commonality around this enthusiasm around motorcycling. So they all mix together. They have a great time. You know, the newbies get to talk to the old dogs. And, and it's, uh, yeah, it's a real great, uh, great way to connect and meet. So what I want people to experience when they come here is just the absolute gobsmacking beauty of this place. I mean, and the, and the fact that you can get into some of these high altitude spots that, that people don't even realize these exist. Maybe a few of the locals, you know, have, have been there, but quite often they, they don't even realize what a treasure they have because they're just kind of their normal backyard. And when I see people come out to the wander and they come back after a day of riding and they're just like, I look at their faces before they pull their helmets off and like their eyes are kind of glazed over and like, ooh, did they have a bad day or like are they angry? But no, they're just like spent and happy. And they pull their helmets off and their smiles just come out and, uh, and they're like, oh my God, I never thought I could get into a place like that. And that is just out of this world. Like, oh my, you know, like we're coming back next year. And, and, uh, and seriously, these, these places are beyond your imagination. Honestly, Trent said it best. I had the exact same feeling. I took myself and my DR650 places that I did not think either of us could get to. I left with a burnt out clutch and a massive sense of accomplishment. <laughs>